Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to be going over basic officer training for any newly found puzzle pirating officers. Whether you're new to the game or just returning from a long break and need a re quick refresher. I will be going over all of the basic functions of your ship. And uh, yeah. So when going over the basic functions of a ship, I always like to start with the helm. You see all these fancy buttons here? Because you are now an officer and this is your ship. That's how we're going to uh, assume at least. First button is how to play navigation. Which leads to the navigation puzzle. Now there are two types of navigation. There's DNAV or duty navigation. And then there is BNAV or battle navigation. They are vastly different puzzles, both of which all officers should have some idea of how to play. More on those in a later video. Basic functions there are duty navigation increases the efficiency of the rest of your crew. So for example, if you're doing well on duty navigation, you're going to multiply the efforts of your sailors by X amount, which will make the ship go faster than it normally would. By that same token, if you're doing poorly on duty navigation, you could decrease the efficiency of your crew. Battle navigation is for battle only. And of course, that's going to be where you're shooting other ships and grappling and all that fun stuff that we'll, we'll go over later. We're not going to do that today. Charting a course. This is a really important thing as your ship does not go anywhere if you do not chart yourself a course. So you'll see you've got a little ship icon. This is where your ship is. And all these little dots are called leak points. In order to chart a course, you must know all of the league points between one island and another. By clicking where you want to go, an island, because you cannot chart to a league point, it will create this dotted blue line to show you your current proposed chart. On the left hand panel, in your options, you can see that there is a clear proposed button which will clear the dotted blue line. Let's say I want to go from Barbary down to Casadim. I will click Casadim Island. You will see the dotted blue line. And if that is where I want to go, you're going to click this bottom button that says chart course. You will see that the line now goes a white dotted line. This is your current charted course. As you move along the course, your ship will leave behind it a trail of solid blue and that shows you where you have been. At any time, at any leak point, sorry, you can click this clear charted button which will remove your charted course and you can chart to whichever island you can reach. For example, I do not know all the leak points between Barbary and Gauntlet, so I can't go there. For the most part, you are going to learn leak points from maps, like these ones. However, as you do duty navigation, you have a chance to memorize leak points so you never need a map again. More on that later. There's also a lovely how to chart button if you ever get stuck. Configure voyage. This panel is really, really important. First thing on here is the amount of swabbies that you want to hire on your ship. 
you can lower it for less swabbies, raise it for the maximum amount of swabbies. I tend to leave it at 100%. Types of voyage. There are many types of voyages that you can undergo. The first type is pillage. You'll see here under pillage, there's this slider where you can select the difficulty of ships that you wish to fight. Please note that this difficulty is not guaranteed, but you have a much higher chance of you're doing really well on duty navigation. You can also choose to target brigands, which are sword fighting, or barbarians, which are rumble, or anywhere in between. So if I set it, say, here, oh, never mind. I thought you could, but you can't. Anyway, you can also toggle PvP on and off. If this is checked on, that means that you will automatically auto-target player vessels. If it's off, you will not auto-target player vessels. The next type of pillage is trade. Trading is essentially like evading, but you have a higher chance of not getting spawns if you're du duty navigating really well. You can offer pay to pirates aboard your ship per relief point. Most of us set this to zero. Blockade is not relevant to a new officer. Greeter pillage. On a greeter pillage, the stock for your ship is provided for you, but the payouts are a lot less. No risk to you, very little reward. Swabby ship transport. Swabby ship transport requires that your hold is completely empty of all goods and co commodities, and then it will move your vessel between one island and another as long as you can chart the course. The Swabbies do demand payment, for the most part it's pretty low. Flotilla attack, not relevant to new officers. However, it is pretty much like a blockade, but it's against a Bergen King. Sea monsters, obviously if you're attacking sea monsters, and evading is so that if you are trying to get back to port with little to no spawns, you can set yourself to evading and duty navigate, and it becomes much harder to attack your vessel. Manage droppers. On this tab, you can see there's a hiring button that you can toggle on and off. When you turn it on for the first time, if you do not have the maximum amount of bots on your ship that you have set yourself to, they will come aboard now. There's a hire swabbies button. So if you didn't want to toggle that on, you just wanted to hire swabbies, you can click that. There is a call all hands button. We do not spam this button. However, if you need to get everybody's attention, you can select all the people ashore to come on your ship all the people in port on, in, or sailing, and all the people in battle. We tend to turn the first two, or the first one on and the last two off, but it really depends. You'll see here, because we were set to pillaging, this tells us what we're going to show up on on the notice board. Currently, we would show up under pillaging with a crew. And there are zero waiting auto applicants. We don't like the auto applicants anyway. It also lists the officer in charge. In this case, it is me. You automatically take this position if you post a job offer. And nobody else is in the position. You can set yourself a little message. And this will show up on the notice board. You click the update statement when you when you're done typing. Officer bulletin board. This is a board where all officers that have access to your vessel can leave notes. In this case, you can see I have a very fancy chart and some ship information. Please leave 
the ship on an island reachable by ferry in the archipelago that you started. I like to leave restock info. In this case, I try to keep my ship stocked to 50 fine rum and 250 small cannonballs. There is a shots to max chart on this ship. This is really important for battle navigating later. But it's, it, it's for any notes that you feel necessary to leave on your ship. Most people like to leave the restocking. And the last thing is hide navigation moves. Now, what this does is anybody that does not have officer privileges aboard your ship, if you lock the moves, they cannot see what you're doing in battle. People who have officer privileges aboard your ship, so yourself and any officer in your crew, if the ship is unlocked, will still see the moves. Everybody else will not. All right, that's the helm. Let's head on down to the ship's hold. Ye hold and trading. This is just a quick info. Basically what we're going to go over now. Inspect the hold. This is what a ship's hold looks like. You've got inventory, buy sell commodities, market bidding, your coffers on the right hand side, which you withdraw and deposit, your transfer. So if you're transferring any items from this ship to another, and any pending orders that you may have. Please note, if you are only an officer, and this is not your ship, you will not be able to withdraw from the coffers, although you will still be allowed to deposit. That is because you need to be the rank of fleet officer or above to take anything off of a vessel that is not yours. This is to help prevent stealing and other such things. Buy sell commodities. Here, we're going to see all the items that could be useful on a pillage, the three types of rum, and the cannonballs for this ship. You can see all the other commodities as well if you choose, but for our purposes, we're going to set it to relevant commodities. You'll notice there's a sort by, buy price, sell price. The buy price is what the shop will buy the item for. In this case, this shop is buying swill for 20 pieces of eight a piece. They will buy 54 units. This is for when you're doing your ship restock at the end of a pillage and you're getting rid of excess items that you no longer need. For our purposes today, we're going to look at the sell price. A sell price is what the shop will sell you a product for. In this case, this shop will sell swell 200 units at 25 pieces of eight a piece. So here we're going to go through our restock info. If you recall, it was 50 fine rum. Now, in this case, where the uh, sell price is such a huge difference, we're going to buy 19 fine rum at the lower sell price and buy the rest of it as low as we can, as cheap as we can. You need pieces of eight in your coffers to make a transaction. So we're just going to add 10,000 pieces of eight into the coffers. In the little buy box here, so the top box, we're going to put 19 units and we can buy. You'll see it disappeared. And then here, we're going to put in 31, which will get us to 50 units of fine rum. There we go. You'll see here on the, under the units on hand, it now says 50. It also says 50 in the ye hold column. 
where I'm going to go down to small cannonballs. You can buy from the top store, although I'm actually going to buy a little bit down because I own this shop down here. We want 250 cannonballs, so we're going to put 250 in the buy box. Buy it. And you'll see there's 100, or 1,964 pieces of eight left. We're just going to go ahead and withdraw that from the hole. If you wanted to sell an item, you would then set the buy price, go for the highest, and use the bottom box to sell. In this case, there's no reason to. The last tab is the market bidding. Each island exports commodities, random commodities that are generated per island. In this case, Barbary sells sugarcane, iron, and broom flour. Unless you're running a shop, there is no reason to care about market bidding. Forge, you have to hold a labor badge to forge, and you have to be on an island that allows you to do so. This is the forge job offer that you can post. And here you can see the vessel records. So you'll see here, Cold Charity acquired the deed. I acquired the deed. And then this was the transactions that we just did. 10,000 in. We bought the rum. We bought the cannibals. And we took out the remainder. Alright. That is everything above deck. We're now going to go into the cabin here. And look at the navigation table. A lot of these we already went over. How to chart a course, chart a course, configure voyage, manage jobbers, we did all that. This is the ship lock. There are three types of ship locks. Battle ready, crew use, and personal use. A vessel set to personal use is only accessible by the owner. So if you set your sloop to, to personal use, you are the only one that can do anything aboard that ship. You are the only one with officer privileges. If you set the lock to crew use, any officer within your crew is able to sail your ship. They are able to add to your hold. If they are a fleet officer, senior officer, or captain, they can withdraw from your hold. However, they cannot sink your ship. And then if you set the lock to battle ready, it's the same thing as crew use, but your ship can now be sunk by off other officers. You can set your disallow pets, so you can choose to if you want the little pets to show up or not. And then you can view the blockade board, which just links directly to the notice board blockades. Last but not least, we're going to go over the pillage, booty pillage chest. You'll see there's another navigation table down here, go figure. About booty, inspect the booty. It looks very similar to your hold, but this is where all the goods after you raid a ship go. You cannot withdraw from this chest. However, you can buy and sell commodities from this chest. Actually, can you buy commodities into it? Yes, you can. Okay. Divide the booty. There's no booty to divide. Let's fix that. Let's put 100 pieces of eight in. All right. Let's divide the booty. So. Booty shares even. This will set to whatever your crew has it set to. Ours is jobbers delight. However, because there are no jobbers, it's even. You can minus one somebody if they didn't do so well. You can also plus one somebody, though that is not possible in this case. 
ship restocking cut. In this case, there isn't one. And the total pieces of eight that will be divided. Submit to vote. Normally, it would whistle at everybody else, but there's nobody else on the ship. And you can view the booty division after it's been done. The last thing is the vessel owner chests. Vessel owner chests are only for sea monster hunts. They're only obtainable if the ship was set to battle ready and another officer took your ship. Sorry, no. Vessel owner chests go to the vessel after each sea monster hunt, regardless of who took the ship. My bad. They're meant to reward the vessel owner specifically for the risk that they... For the risk of losing their ship. Yes, there we go. English. We can English. So, that is everything. The basics of, of the ship items. Now we're going to look on the right hand panel to the vessel tab. And this will be the last thing we go over for today. Firstly, it tells you what you're set to. In this case, we're pillaging average to hard brigands and barbarians. Your speed, your damage, and your bilge. Speed, you want full. It's yellow. Damage is red. You don't want it. You don't want any, much like we have now. And spillage is blue, you also want it to be empty. This is the amount of cannons that you've currently got loaded, in this case zero. You'll see here, it shows the lock that your ship is set to, in this case crew use. Battle ready has a skull, and obviously personal use is a locked lock. Your crew name, your crew reputation, in this case scurvy dogs. The name of your vessel, and your flag. This panel changes if there's another vessel nearby you. It will show you all their information and you will have the ability to attack them or disengage if you're engaging them. This will show you the pirates aboard. It also shows you... It breaks it out into stations when you're sailing. So it'll show you who's on sails, who's on bilge, who's on carp. It also allows you to send ship-wide whistles. Like that. That would whistle to everybody on the ship and give everybody an order. Or you can order people individually. Sail and deport or port. Obviously, that's what tells your vessel to go or to stop. You can see here, somebody got on bilge, and it's separated. Disembark is to get off the ship. Blockade, you only see if you're a royalty in your flag. And arrange furniture, obviously you can arrange things on your ship. There are two toggle buttons here. This is the jobbing notice that you saw before. And this is auto target. I always like to turn auto target off. The reason is because when you're auto targeting ships, you will attack anything within what you're seeking. These ships may not have spawned for you, which means the loot will not be to the level of your ship. Oftentimes meaning the payouts are very low. You have a higher chance of a better payout if the ships spawned for you, and ships that spawn for you will attack you on their own. I think that's everything you need to know about being an officer, or at least what to do on your ship. There will be videos to follow about duty navigation and battle navigation respectively. And uh, yeah, good luck, good luck pillaging mates.